Best of R slash Entitled Parents Episode 24. Apologies for bad English. It's my first language I'm just kinda stupid. Let me start this off by saying her child had no apparent physical disability. He wasn't in a wheelchair and could walk fine on his own. So my school's front door has a doorbell with a camera and a speaker that you speak to. You ring the doorbell and say why you're there. If you're a student who checks in late, like me, they usually recognize you and tell you to come to the front office to check in and unlock the door. You're supposed to go in one at a time but if you're with another student that they recognize they'll usually let you both just come in. So I'm walking in with my friend. We ring the doorbell and they unlock the door and tell us to come check in. So we do. Simple as that. We walk up to the front office to check in and as my friend is talking to the office worker this lady starts talking to me. EM. Excuse me me. Turns to look at her EM. You should know that it's a common courtesy for you to hold the door open for somebody with a special needs child. If this was anywhere else I would just apologize and move on. But I'm following the rules and I would have gotten in trouble for holding the door for her. Me. I'm sorry but it's the school's rule that you have to go through the door one at a time. She keeps arguing with me, repeating the same thing over and over again as if I've done something wrong by not letting a random stranger into the school in the age of school shootings. Eventually the office worker, who is on the phone, looks at the EM. Office lady, that's against the rules, they're not supposed to do that. The EM of course reiterated the exact thing she said to me and the office worker ignored her and went back on her phone call and apologized to whoever she was on a call with and said, Sorry, some mom is harassing on of my students. I wish EM had heard that but she didn't. Her kid's just standing here the whole time, minding his own business. This grown woman is attacking a 17 year old for not wanting to get in trouble with the school. She starts talking to the other office worker and I just left. Not super bad but pretty annoying. TLDR. Lady thinks she can break the school's rules just cause she has a special needs child. Edit. While this kinda blew up a bit. In a thing over 200 upvotes is big for me haha. Thank you guys so much. I'll post any other app stories if I encounter another in the wild. Thank you. Next. So. Obligatory English is not my mother tongue. Might have bad grammar. From mobile. Yada yada. Also. This might get long. TL. Doctor at end. The cast. EA. Entitled aunt. Even calls herself my mom. Hell no. EU. Entitled aunt's boyfriend. Also has no spine and just blabbers after EAD. Dad. Four years younger than EAG. Granny. EA's and D's mom and of course, me. If I'd write about everything she's done over the last 22 years, boy we'd still be here in a week. A little bit of background story. I'm living with my grandma and my dad. Dad isn't always around since he's often overseas and I'm NC with my mom since little over a year. We're all on bad terms with my aunt. Even mentioning her is traumatic for all of us. This will be important later. So, my aunt is entitled to everything my grandma owns. My grandma owned two houses back then, one for each child. EA already got her house way back when she wasn't even 25. The other one is the 1G. D and I are living in. Four days ago, my grandma had a minor stroke and had to go to the hospital. I had a job interview that day so I couldn't be around but I checked in with my dad who was with her every 10 minutes or so. After I was done, I couldn't catch my dad so I had to call my aunt. And now, it begins. She had to pick up clothes for her and coincidentally looked through all of our rooms. She just screamed like a banshee how disgusting we are and how dare we not to be like her because she is the only responsible adult in this family and nobody wants to talk to her since they are all afraid of the truth. Also, I have to be there in an instant. I can't recite what exactly she said after that because I just ignored it like always but let me tell you, it's always just straight up bad. So, I had a decision to make. Go to grandma and just straight up overstrain her since we all knew my aunt would scream at D and I in the hospital or carry on with my plan for the weekend. The latter it was. She was fine again and as I said, I didn't want to upset her with everybody fighting in the hospital room. Three days ago, I got a picture of an opened letter clearly addressed to me, with content also only meant for me. For a reason, all my official letters are sent to EA. In my country, it's against the law to open letters not addressed to yourself. But who cares about that? At least not EA. I made a building loan contract a while ago without telling her. 
because, why should I? So, again a lot of screaming, how dare I doing anything without her knowing. Fed up as I was, I just straight up asked her with what right she's opening my letters again. Her answer? I don't care about anything you say anyways, you don't have to write me again. Apostrophe. Oh well. I guess I found my new favorite phrase to say now should I see her. So, two days ago after I arrived back home my BF and I visited grandma. She was pretty much fine and we talked without any problems and she knew all of our names. Until, you guessed it, EA and EU also visited. At home, my grandma feared EA. She's living really close and granny can't stand her guts. EA can't speak normally. She'll always have this demanding and hateful voice and grandma gets really stressed out even thinking about her. Mind you, she's already 85. Well, it was awful. Poor granny was so terrified. She couldn't talk anymore, couldn't remember anything and was just flat out disorientated while smiling dumbfounded and ignoring most of the stuff EA said. Additionally, her ECG was all over the place as soon as she heard EA's voice, almost like PTSD from her own daughter. It was pretty heartbreaking. It's common sense, not to scream at someone in a hospital. At least, it should. Not for EU apparently. I don't know what exactly happened as I wasn't present at this time but D was and told us of this. An awful person got an awful fitting partner it seems. Fast forward to yesterday, EA demanded D to take a day off so he and I can talk to a doctor. Halfway there he gets a message from EA he won't be needed anymore. She already talked to him. Great. The problem with this is, I am the only one with a patient decree since my grandma does not trust EA at all with such decisions and E and I wanted the hospital to know how bad her state of mind and ECG worsened when EA arrived. Of course, the doctor can't talk individually to each family member and refused to talk to us again. We sadly don't know what EA told the doctor but the one thing we know is, it is not her place to say. Last I heard from her was how she demanded all of granny's pension as she wanted to manage it. A few things EA also did. Thank you. Next. Here I am again with another story about my self obsessed mother. This again happened before writing this and involves my mother, brother and sister. My sister and I have never been on the best terms. She was raised as a basic girl who's more focused on makeup and caring for children. I'm normally referred to as a disaster child because I was more interested in dinosaurs than baby dolls are slash not like a third generals anyone? Dot. But today she ended up pushing the line. Behind my bed is a door to the boiler room. This door is incredibly dangerous as it's a loose door, and is also made of heavy wood. If it falls on you it hurts. I've suffered many head and arm injuries to it, but those were me moving the door as it's normally in a secure position. My sister came in, moved the door to get business presents, said I am going to let go so it's not my problem and dropped it. On my head. It hurt. I was in so much excruciating pain it felt like I had my head smashed into concrete. Luckily no blood or chipped skull. My mother came home a few hours after. I texted her asking to hurry as I was scared I was actually hurt but she took her time. When she came in I explained everything. How my sister had mocked me before as I don't want to go to uni. How I'm considered wasted potential. And how she then dropped her door on me. Laughed and walked off. My mother responded in the calmest voice she ever could. Bruce I don't care. I have far more important things to worry about. I was in stunned silence as she walked out. I tried to call out but all I got was shut up I told you I don't care. Before she proceeded to go pamper my siblings telling them how they've done such a good job today. Doing what? Hitting me with a door? Sorry, I don't know if this belongs here or not. I'm just so distressed. Thank you. Next. Hello fellows. Here's some backstory. I have a Ukrainian friend who moved to my country, Canada, back in 2012. I remember when I met him in 2016 he couldn't speak almost any English. I remember becoming friends with him because nobody else would. So, for the next few years it's study Russian. A language he knew. And now I am able to speak almost fluent Russian. I can't really write Russian that well but I can read and type the language. And here's where my story begins. Me and my Ukrainian friend, his name is Artem as he was given it by his Russian parents, went to a local Italian sandwich shop in our small British Colombian town. He can speak better English now but still struggles on words like lead, as in leading a crew, and lead as in the metal. 
So, we talked Russian, here enters the mother of grand holy entitlement. I was enjoying my spicy sandwich when I was greeted by a younger kid, 8 or so, who asked us questions regarding our language. I spoke in slow and rather broken English so our time could understand me. Once he asked where we were from and I quickly responded with Chelyabinsk Russia as it was a random city I had memorized and well. The kid probably didn't know where the Ukraine was. After a couple minutes the boy leaves to his mother who is ordering herself and her son food. I remember the mother walking over and yelling at me why are you trying to spread propaganda and homosexuality to my son. I, whom of which wasn't prepared for this simply just gasped. I started to speak Russian again and she just went off oh my lord, there you go, insulting me in German or whatever. I then correct her Russian, im speaking Russ oh my god, oh Russian, oh no, stop spreading anti-Jewish propaganda to my son. Mom we spoke to him for fee go back and fight for your country. Why are you even here in Canada? Are you planning to bomb US like you blew up the twin towers in America? At this point I am curled up into a small ball of shame. Soon, manager comes out what in God's blasting name is happening out here? I wanted to respond but couldn't these pigs were spreading anti-Christian and anti-Jewish war propaganda to convert my son to communism. This mother confused Russia with Nazi extremism. I stepped up and shut the shit storm down by saying my friend was Ukrainian and was from the Ukraine. She then had the fucking audacity to say what? That's not a real fucking place. I am a geographer and I know that. This cunt was soon banned from the establishment therefore after, and was kicked off the premises. Thank you, next. First time poster to this sub. Not a crazy story like most on here but annoying enough to post. I'm a nanny. One of my job duties is to pick up my 4 year old from half day school around 11.30 a.m. The way pickup works for half day, cause park in a line along the front of the school, then parents slash caretakers walk about 15-20 yards, or further depending on how far you park, to one of the side entrances where the teacher dismisses the students. Because I have to carry my 18 meters old with me at pickup, I get to the school around 11.10 before the line fills up so I don't have to drag her out and walk far in the cold and rain. If I'm running late with the baby and not first in line, I'm third or fourth and it's not a huge deal. Most pickup people are grandparents or nannies, but there are quite a few parents too. I'm friendly with pretty much everyone, and usually chat with other moms or grandparents while waiting for dismissal. And so it begins. Not an entitled parent, but entitled grandmother. E.g. is not someone I see very often. Her grandchild is not in my end case. Nanny kids, class but I often chat with the child's mom who used to pick up but is now working. A few weeks ago before Thanksgiving break, I stood out holding 18 mo while we waited. E.g. stands a few feet behind me playing on her phone. I turned and we made eye contact so I gave a smile and she struck up a conversation about 18 mo's outfit. She said something along the lines of it's so hard parking here. I can't believe they don't have more spaces open for pickup. I said something along the lines of it being a small lot and most spots were taken by teachers and staff. And it helps to arrive early to get further up in the car line. I thought that was the end of that until the next day. It was about 11.15. Quite a while before having to get out of the car. 18 Mo was sleeping in the car and I was sipping coffee, listening to her podcast. I notice Alexis gunning it through the school entrance, quickly coming past me, then throwing the car into reverse, trying to squeeze in the minuscule spot in front of me. There's no way she can fit and the front half of her car is sticking out into the driveway. She keeps backing up and backing up and I'm getting more nervous as she is getting way too close to my front bumper for comfort. Finally, I tap the horn. E.G. storms out of the car, leaving her door open and glaring at me through her sunglasses throwing her hands in the air as if I did something wrong. As a person who doesn't like confrontation, I waited until the last minute to walk to the door, hoping grandma wouldn't try to chew my head off. I don't even know that she recognized it was me. Either way, I didn't feel like a bumper tap that morning. I got out and made my way down the walkway, hoping she didn't recognize me. I was wrong. E.g. walked behind me once again but instead came to my side and this was our conversation. E.g., for the record, I wasn't close enough to your car for you to blow the horn at me. If you would have left a little room, I could have easily parked. Me, 
Well I purposely pull all the way up so that people behind me can get up close to the entrance too. E.g. Clearly I was running late today and there were no spots left. Did you think about that? Me. I- Well a couple of the moms park on the street across from the entrance. That's not too far off from the end of the line. E.g. Oh. Yeah sure. Since it's not so far, how about you park there? Before it got heated I stepped away as the kids were running out from dismissal. It continues to happen every day now as EG is now trying to be a jerk or she realized that she can technically get in front of me now so she takes full advantage. Why she feels as though she's entitled to jump in front of the line regardless of usually getting there last. I'm not sure. Thank you. Next. Had to take son to an urgent care clinic last night and when we got there, there was a couple people ahead of us. No big deal. Gave me time to fill out paperwork plus I'm aware that you're seen in the order you came in. We had been waiting for about 30 minutes when a mom and her daughter, looked around 15 16, comes in. Daughter sits in one of the chairs while mom goes up to the front desk and gets really pushy about her daughter needing to be seen right away, acting like she was going to die if she wasn't going to receive medical attention. Why wouldn't you just go to the ear if it's that serious? Mom, still fuming. Sits down to fill out paperwork and my son's name gets called. Mom had the audacity to ask me if her daughter could go in place of my 2 year old. Claimed that she's been so sick for weeks. Told her no, that we've been waiting for quite some time. Mom just huffed at me. Poor girl looked mortified that her mother was being this way. Thank you. Next. So I just got off work and wanted to tell this story, since it's pretty funny emo. I work in a shop called We Will Call Shesco, and I usually hang out in the kiosk, where cigarettes are sold. Normally my shift goes along uneventful, but today it was different. A woman walks over with her kid and asks for brand A cigarettes. We had sold out so I said sorry mom but we've sold out. I can offer brand B as an alternative however. She wasn't happy about that. Excuse me, what do you mean you've sold out? I gave a funny look we haven't go any in stock. Why not? We sold out. The woman stared daggers at me. I don't have time for this. Give me brand A cigarettes. Hear that? Brand A not that shit brand B crap. I mentally sighed. Mom, we've sold out of brand A. We don't have any to sell you. That's it. Bring me your manager. Fine, but she'll just say the same thing. The woman gave me a smug look as I called the manager. Manager enters the scene. Hello mom my manager started. This employee is refusing to sell me brand A cigarettes. I want him fired. My manager gave me a dumbfounded look. Why aren't you selling her those cigarettes? We've sold out. Look I opened the shutters to reveal an empty shelf. Yeah, sorry we've sold out mom. But we have brand B as an alternative. The woman gave an angry sigh you've wasted my time. I'm not coming back and waddled out.